recent times with all the the climate change stuff and thinking oh what what can i do to make a difference or how can i be better myself um what's the conclusion you're coming to how can you be better well i made like some changes just just in general just being more aware just trying to use less single use um plastics absolutely that sort of thing um reuse things also made some changes to my diet um so eating more like plant-based not more a plant-based diet um instead and yeah just doing the, the little things that that i can nice um so yeah so that that's what i've been been doing that's great and yeah and initially i just set it out as like a, a challenge like oh can i do this for for two weeks and mm. then i kind of just say yeah i'll just stick with it and um and just researching into things like myself on, on my own terms yeah. like through throughout high school myself if i didn't want to do something <laughs> i it'd be very if i wasn't interested it'd be very hard to get me on board like the kids in the gratitude journals yeah hmm. yeah if i didn't see a reason behind it like obviously i still i still did my work i still studied because i had mum on my back and she was like education is important um but yeah if but now it, i think and i've had this discussion like with with Decranus as well like yeah when you are interested in something something kind of like jumps at you and you want to look into it on your own terms you are a hell of a lot more motivated yes. than if you have to be in this place at this time every single day and I completely understand with the kids at school that, that school is hard because you've got to rock up you got to stick to that timetable you look at what you've got on for the day oh I've got science I've got maths I've got English I've got pay I'm excited for this oh can't be bothered with this da 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 um so yeah just really coming about from that and like reading into things watching some documentaries you know that documentaries aren't the most legitimate source of information it's um, only really one yes. perspective and, and i'm glad you realize that and i already know biased. which one you're, you're referring to yeah. um in particular <laughs> and i dive down that rabbit hole for dozens of hours mm. i'm going through debates of like plant based meat based you know i have a huge document that goes arguments for and against plants meat plants meat mm. and i think th this is a nuanced conversation guys there is a lot of detail oh there's so much but and there's only so much that you can fit into a documentary exactly exactly this, people spend their whole lives as researchers trying to find truths and, 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 but here's the thing, nutrition science, it's very difficult. Yeah, 100%. Right? Um, and people, they attach their identity to it. They become very emotional about it. You challenge, you challenge their, their diet. You challenge their identity. Mm. It's like, no, they're separate things, guys. And we can, you, you, you're not, you're not uh, a terrible person if you necessarily eat meat. You're not the best person if you eat only plants, but you're also not... The worst person if you eat only plants, and you're not the best person if you eat only meat. Mm. Um, and, I, and I say that because, okay, what can we do then? All right, if 97-ish percent of the population um, eat meat consistently, mm. all right, cool. Um, is it realistic to see the whole world go plant-based? Probably not. But what can we do? All right, the, you spend maybe like, a, you, like the decisions you're making. You are deciding to consume a, a lower amount of certain meat-based products. Now, what's a, how can you have your cake and eat it too? Well, let's think about it. There's some interesting evidence showing the uh, global emissions, uh, pardon me, the, yeah, the global emissions effect of organically sourced food, uh, meat and plants versus non-organically sourced uh, meat and plants. So we talk about more grass-fed pasture-raised mm. versus factory farmed, uh, more industrial monocrop culture. And what we see is that Fuck, I might even pull it up if I could do this quick enough. Uh, what we see is that the organic and the, the pasture raised is actually a pretty effective decision to make to reduce those emissions. And so, all right, maybe I can't, maybe I don't want to, maybe I need to keep consuming X and Y meat products for whatever reason. Well, how can I make a different better quality apologies for that sound yeah that just like woo. <laughs> how can i make for those listening i just got a big old windows 10 sound um felt that in my parietal lobe <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> here it is evaluating the environmental impact of various dietary patterns combined with different food production systems 
Average environmental impact. Comparison among the various dietary patterns expressed as the average of the results obtained through three different perspectives. So we have the omnivorous diet based on conventional farming. We have the omnivorous diet based on organic farming. Um, and then they have a vegan group, a vegetarian group, and a normal group, and then an omnivore group. And the bottom of the list was the vegan diet based on organic agriculture. So we saw the lowest points of resources used, economical, best economical quality, and also human health was ranked. But what was next to that, just a little bit above it, was the omnivorous diet based on... Uh, Omnivorous? No, that was the vegan. The vegan diet was based on conventional farming. So vegan, vegan were the first two. Then the vegetarian. Then the vegetarian. Okay. But then if we look at the omnivorous diet based on organic farming, it was within the ballpark of the vegan and vegetarian diets, more specifically the veg vegetarian diets. So I say that to say, you can look that up if you want to see more details, but it's interesting to say that, hold on, maybe... We can change from conventional to organic to pasture-raised. Mm. Thanks for being patient there. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mm. And it's in, like, as I said, I'm just thinking of ways that, that I can be better myself because you could eat an omnivorous diet and then maybe you don't drive your car. Maybe you take public transport every day. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you ride yeah. your bike. Great point. So that's the thing that you're doing. I don't care what you do. You do your thing. I'll do mine. Like... I'm not going to try and push my views and my um, perspectives onto people. Like, if people want to have a chat about it, I'm, I'm sweet and I'm all for that. Um, but, yeah, just kind of just trying to find ways to, to do things. Yeah, when you try and change people and force things down, I've done that before. It just... Nah, it, it just, You're not going to... It just makes them more resistant. Yeah. It gets digs their feet further into the ground. <laughs> Think of talking to that guy downstairs. You'd yeah. be like, nah. <laughs> no, but I talked to him about this. I talked to Christian about, like... He had all these fucking, all these bottles, all these um, uh, single-use plastic bottles. I'm like... Oh, he'd always go down to the servo and get bottled water. M mate, just get a drink bottle and yeah. fill it up. And his intention was, I want it for the clients and everybody. I'm like, all right, it's good intentions. But install a water system. Mm. Um, boil the kettle. Like, and like, all right, I know how this sounds. When you talk about these things, for some people, it's like, oh, here we go. <laughs> One of those guys, huh? <laughs> But well, guess what, motherfucker? <laughs> I don't even know where to start because it's that overwhelming. Mm. Because when I go to Hong Kong and I, you see, and this is just an example because Asia's really polluted, mm. right? When we have gone hours off the beaten path, right? And we're doing, we're doing a hike uh, back in like the, 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 the mountains to find this beach in, in Hong Kong. And you see just a river full of trash yeah i'm like that's us yeah and that is taking that's going to take thousands to tens of thousands of years to to degrade and then those microplastics are going to get in our water and those that's going to get in our food supply and our water system mm -hmm. so it's all about finding what people care about what do you care about do you care about your health okay then there's a justification for for not using single single use plastics um the environment animals like i think we can all find something where we can make a better decision for humanity and for the other inhabitants on this planet mm. just find your thing and do it yeah like, roll with it as long as you do something like you'd rather have a bunch of imperfects like yeah. a million people trying to make a difference as opposed to like 500 just being absolutely it's a great point like huh. you can make a lot more difference that yeah way. like yeah, like what if everyone just did like 0.1% of change or 1% of change instead of trying to get everybody to flip, mm. right? And like I know people that have started like not eating meat one day a week. Cool. Like that's a change, yeah. And you know what? Like, we're talking to Lockie Kennan, Jerry Borzillo, we, we talk about kangaroo. Oh yeah, I used to eat kangaroo. I used right? to eat it all the time. Well, guess what? Maybe used to you don't have to always use to. Maybe it's something you can incorporate if you're going to pick a meat product. But think about it. Wild animal. It's not, doesn't use any resources from a, well, that's not true. It doesn't use any resources from a farming, uh, if we have to talk about like breeding and farming within mm. a, within a, uh, a factory, for example. Um, 
you are essentially taking a wild animal that's very overpopulated by the way um do you know how many do you remember yeah, how many kangaroos you, you, said, you, you yeah, got there's it there's a lot <laughs> for every person in australia there's equates to about two mm. right so there's about 50 million kangaroos 40 50 million it's a wild animal and so if you're gonna w- picking wild animals um that are especially overpopulated and and potentially need to be reduced uh can be a lot more a lot more smarter way to pick your food choices from a global climate um, resource heavy water intensive like all yeah, these just resources a sustainability Susta- thank you it's a much better word <laughs> i'm trying to put all the things inside sustainability oh my god it's all right you just sustainability is the umbrella you just like yeah but you, exactly you well said um sustainability and so maybe that's a decision people can make instead of going for the beef all the time which is quite water intensive and a lot of methane and think about how much water goes into like those crops for that cow yeah to absolutely eat. and at the same time though um you know things like chocolate and coffee they use a lot of water too they use mm. a lot of resources and they have their own they have quite high emissions too um you know, we're not abstained from um from contributing to the worsening of the planet no one is uh but it's just about managing those decisions. And I, but I think people, some would think that just because I'm doing plant-based only um, and I'm eating at only organic stores like that, I'm not, oh, no, my, my hands are not, there's no blood on my hands. Well, no one's, no one's not guilty. No one is completely uh, guilt-free, or I not mean not guilty is the word, but um, a lot of animals are, uh, displaced and even killed through mono monocrop culture where you have to plant and harvest things like wheat and different types of vegetation like having these huge farms that so even plant-based farms if they're they're monoculture mono then it's, it's going to displace a lot of animals usually mm. and um but I don't know, it's just about making better decisions more effective quality decisions 